What is up everybody? Chris from Team Aquascape. We've got Dan, Luis, Chris, and John Griffith from Paradise Ponds out of Kansas. And we are going to work on a pondless waterfall today using Pennsylvania Fieldstone, which is one of my favorite stones to use. And it's a little bit different because we don't get to work with that stone every single day like we do with granite, moss rock, limestone, and some of the other run of the mill stones that we use. So are you guys ready for this? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So like I said, we've got a pondless waterfall today. The guys are bringing in all of those plastic mats that you see us use in the video so very, very often. This is the area of our pondless waterfall. We've got a living room over here. We've got a kitchen over there, kitchen sink window over there. And of course, we've got this gorgeous outdoor fire pit area with a gazebo to boot. What we're gonna do is we are going to start off our pondless waterfall right about here facing back towards the window. We'll get about a 14, 18 inch waterfall facing back towards the house so that they can see that. That, it will dog leg around wrap around and through here we were gonna do a stone slab bridge element kind of like one of those peekaboo bridges where they can hop across these big slabs of Pennsylvania field stone and then they will discharge into our basin back down over into here so we've got a little bit of work to do get the sod out and then we will start digging as well as bringing in five yards of topsoil to create that berm going back over here in order to create that elevation and a nice subtle berm back in here to help make it look less volcanic so let's take a walk out to the front. Let's see our access. Here's John Griffith. Like Paradise I said, Ponds. Paradise Ponds in Kansas. And of course, you've got Chris. Here's that gorgeous stone that we have right here. That's that Pennsylvania field stone that we talked about. So we've got some really, really cool pieces. We've got a 15 foot wide liner. We've got a couple sacks of gravel. We do have some cobbles for some of those landslide washes. And of course, we've got our dingo. That's a piece of equipment we are going to use today to help us place these rocks in, as well as get them back there. Because some of these, I don't think we could ball cart like maybe that one that's about four by four feet all the way around yeah i don't want to carry that thing by hand and neither do the rest of the guys so we'll strap that thing up to the dingo and we'll get it into the backyard we got our work cut out for us first we're going to lay it out then we're going to cut the sod get the sod out start digging and start moving dirt so just like that all of the grass is gone we got a little bit of cleanup left to do here's going to be our reservoir we've got nine small aqua blocks and a pump vault and a spillway 25 feet of pipe i believe we have a 2000 to 5000 sld solid handling pump you see right down there we got a 15 by 25 liner a 15 by 40 piece of fabric and all of our products so now what we're going to do is we're going to construct these aqua blocks as well as dig this hole for the reservoir i'm thinking i'm going to put the pump vault back over there and then we'll just fill that little triangle space with some of the cobbles and large gravel that we have out in the street rather than doing like a three by three footprint and that reservoir creeping back this way i'm just going to go with four four and then the one and then the pump vault and i'll make sure that we support it on both sides i'm not too worried about the compression because of the size of the reservoir being so small but normally i'd like to have a square footprint in through here so hope that makes sense but we're gonna go ahead and get going and start digging Dan's kind of tightening up some of the folds in the liner, but we have our reservoir dug. There's our nine small aqua blocks and our pump vault over there. Guys are gonna cut another 15 by 15 piece of underlayment. We go on top of the aqua blocks, but we are going to bring those pieces of field stone all the way out on top, creating a waterfall coming in to our infiltration area, which is down here. Pump vault back over there. Then that stream's gonna kind of twist and turn up and through here using those big, large slabs. This will be much more of like a big, lazy, babbly brook than some of those crashing, tumbling waterfalls that you've seen us do in other videos. That's just a byproduct of the topography that we're working with in the style of stone and the style of waterfall that was chosen between the clients and myself when we were here on the design consultation. So really, really excited. I love these type of waterfalls. There's just so much movement and interactivity and being so subtle. And as you can see the gorgeous garden behind me, they have a ton of pollinator plants and bird loving plants as well. So we are going to make this stream an extension of their already gorgeous garden back in here and just bring that extra breath the life that only the sights and sounds of running water will provide. So we're going to get going. We're going to start bringing rock in and setting boulders. So exciting. This is where the magic happens, as you guys know. Stay tuned.
smokes everybody it is another day out here on this amazing pondless waterfall project got john griffith over here from paradise ponds out of kansas and then uh wait show that again do it again do it again no oh yeah that's right everybody he's single his phone number what's your phone number <laughs> 867 472 perfect hope you guys and girls got that out there. And of course we've got the man, Chris Zeschke out there. We released Dan and Luis from their duties today. They are over helping Jack. This is day two of the project. We threw, we got thrown a little bit of a curveball yesterday. Uh, unfortunately, you guys might see it in the time lapse, but we got hit by mother nature and uh, the rain slowed us down. Also what slowed us down is the addition of that right there. That medium urn, as well as this one right here got incorporated into the stream. When we originally got here, we were just gonna do a waterfall facing back into an upper pool towards these windows. But the more we started talking with the homeowner and finding out, taking the cues from the rest of their beautiful garden is they are bird lovers. So what better way to bring the sights and the sounds of mother nature, i.e. feathered aviary friends, than bring sights and sounds of running water. So what we did is we talked to them about incorporating an urn in the top over here, in this top pool, to not only give them some visual interest from this gorgeous window coming right out of their family room, but it will also give the birds a place to bathe, for them to perch on top, give them some extra visual interest. It prevents us from having to do an enormous berm, which we were originally going to do when building a waterfall, but this whole upper pooling area totally changed, as well as the incorporation of this small urn over here, which can be viewed from inside their kitchen window and kind of kitchen dining room table area right in through there. So ended up taking us a little bit of extra time, but we are in the home stretch now. You can kind of see the configuration of the plumbing over here. What Chris is doing is he's going to end up covering all of this with gravel. We're gonna do small to a certain point and then convert over into big gravel. But first we wanna run this and fine tune those ball valves. So we've got a bulkhead fitting to an MPT. Our two inch line runs all the way down through a trench back to our pump vault over there. We've got a ball valve for the urn as well as a ball valve for a stub of two inch pipe that's going to discharge out underneath this flat slab of stone here. The reason we're discharging it underneath that slab of stone is we don't wanna see all that spraying effect when the water is discharging out of that. So it's important to put ball valves on both so you can really regulate the flow and have total control of the volume of water coming out of the respective areas. Also what we're doing is on the same pump we are going to be controlling this small urn down in here. We're going to tee off the line. Again a little bit of double work but we're going to tee off the line and come this way putting a ball valve not only on the line going that way but we're going to put another ball valve going that way. Very expensive to do it this way but it's really the only way for us to really fine tune and get the flow exactly right and not have to come back and reset everything occasionally. So we want to be able to set it and forget it with this project. So that's why we're putting a series of ball valves in all over the place. I hope that makes sense. I'll show you as we're fine tuning it as we finish up this project. Really, really love how it's turning out and couldn't be more happy with the effort out of John. He's been fantastic. So anybody in the Kansas area, anywhere in Kansas, that's right, anywhere in Kansas. Oh, Missouri, where else do you service? Hey, he'll even come to Illinois to build you a pond. Just ask him. So shout out, look at him. See, he knows you will. <laughs> Fantastic guys. So I'm gonna put the camera down, keep rolling, and we're gonna get this thing done and let you guys see the gorgeous fountainscape that we're about to come up. already putting their spin on things. Love to see that. They've been chomping at the bit to get out here and put their flare on their brand new water feature. It turned out absolutely, absolutely incredible. Oh yeah, see? Here's Mikey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're gonna have to wait and see where Mikey ends up. I'm gonna come back in the morning when this water is crystal clear. It's a little cloudy just from stirring everything up, doing all the finish work, but I cannot wait to show you guys how gorgeous this thing is. Stay tuned, be right back.
Guys, what an incredible transformation. I came back today, the water is now crystal clear, all the sediment has settled out, and I couldn't be more happy with the overall sound and movement and aesthetic value that it brings to this already gorgeous backyard. You can see there's an enormous amount of space behind the urn up here and the berm to plant. Really naturalize this whole area back in through here, creating a beautiful backdrop, which you can tell they have no shortage of green thumb. So I love, 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 love the way this backyard fountainscape slash waterfall turned out. Looks absolutely incredible. The large urn right there looks absolutely spectacular, especially from inside the house of their living room, family room, TV room, whatever you want to call it. The sights and the sounds of water. You can see they've got the windows open here, giving them that audible energy as well as the visual. Be a great place for birds to come perch on the edge, wet their beaks, bathe, clean. Then you've got this gorgeous upper pool with these enormous pieces of Pennsylvania field stone kind of edging out everything and then you've got these gravel washes making it look very irregular and just natural and then it kind of sweeps wells up in through here comes over this series of small cascades then twists and turns and then it leads you to this area where it kind of dog legs back and does this 90 degree turn back down into the basin I love the steppers that we push through here that are also part of the stream you just kind of see how you step across leading you back out to the backyard. They've already started putting in some of their own flair and their stepper pathway leading you back out to the backyard. But just gorgeous. The movement and everything. I love the small urn over here. Just adding something unique off of the edge. We did a little drop liner over here to get that water to travel further over the basin. If you remember that reservoir goes all the way back over to there. And of course you got your pump vault down here with your SLD 2000 to 5000 gallon per hour pump. And then we manifolded off. One two inch line goes up that way all the way around into that upper pool and then we've got another portion going back up here teeing into a one inch line that's drilled into the side of that urn over there and really able to dial in the flow to all three portions of the stream meaning the upper pool the medium urn and then the small urn and this is the effect that you get just incredible just absolutely stunning i love how the water gets down to about six inches and then opens up back in here in this pooling area just like you see in nature we've got these wide areas and then as it chokes down you get this rush of water and the movement coming through you can see the bubbles and following them through the current and then they speed up as they race through that little pinch point and then opens back up and then slides over that big bedrock waterfall there. Absolutely gorgeous. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let us know in the comments section below what you think. If you have any questions on how it was put together, please feel free to give us a shout. We will be sure to answer any of the questions that you have. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time here in the good old US of A. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.